today's video, you are going to learn how to make the basic production for the weekend's blinding lights in Logic Pro X using just Logic Stock plugins. I wanted to make this video for someone who is more of a beginner in Logic Pro X and needs a little bit of a fun project to help familiarize themselves with the door. So I'm hoping this little fun production building tutorial will help you learn a few new things about Logic. And if you are an intermediate or advanced at Logic or consider yourself advanced to be at Logic, maybe you will learn something today from this as well or be the observer as I recreate this song for you in Logic. Before we do get into the video though, guys, hit that subscribe button. It is the best way to support the channel in any future videos I do. And if you do enjoy this video, please don't hesitate to comment below any other songs that you want me to try and recreate in Logic in future videos. But yes, let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so I'm in Logic and this is a fairly simple production I've done again because I wanted to keep this for beginners. Uh, what you'll see here is we have our drums, our bass, two basses laid on top of each other, a pad and the synth which is doing the hook of the song. Now what we're going to do is we're going to quickly play this song for you again and see what it sounds like. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the drums. I've gone with analog circuits for the drums. Let's listen to the drums. Now, to try and give it a little bit more of that 80s disco pop vibe, what I have done is with the snare in this, as you will see, I have put on a reverb. So it's really important that you put your effects through bus sends because you can control them a lot better. And it's going into 2.6, got a completely wet signal going through, not any of the dry. So we get that nice long decay reverb on the snare. And again, the analog circuits is just a logic preset. So if you go into your library up here and you go to the main window, you'll see electronic drum kits and you can scroll up and there's analog circuits. So that's there for you. Next, we are going to go on to the bass. So the bass that I chosen is a mixture of two to get the sound I want. Now, this first bass is the, probably the main feature and the closest to the bass that you're going to get. Let's have a listen to this first one. Now you can find this particular bass synth in Alchemy. It's called 70s Classic Synth Bass. I'm gonna give it a five star because I always seem to use it. And the only extra thing I've done is an EQ where I really boosted the mids and the highs to give it a little bit more clarity because it already had the warmth, feel like it was just lacking a bit of brightness to get it close to sound. And I've layered it with this Agile Synth Bass, which again is in Alchemy. The reason why I added this bass in was I thought it supported the low end a lot more. I did a low boost on this because I felt like this first synth bass was just lacking in the low end a little bit where it wasn't exactly the same. So layering, especially synths or laying anything, is a really good technique for shaping a sound how you want it to because when you try to recreate sounds or make your own sound, you're not going to have it exactly how you want it straight away. So adding certain textures which bring a certain element and fusing them together can make a sound that you'd be a lot more happy with, which is why it's really good to experiment putting sounds together, especially sim. So let's play them together quickly and see what that sounds like. There are also octaves above each other as well, which creates this really nice sort of uh, harmonic effect. Next, we've got the pads. So it's the 80s Starlight, which is a preset in Classic Simps, again, in the window. So if you go on Classics and there's 80s Starlight there, let's have a listen to this. For anyone who wants to know the chords, it's G minor, C minor, E flat, and then B flat. So all I've done there is I have played the chords in, I have done two hands playing the chords in, just the triads, and then that creates the certain sound I'm going for. I did also do a few bits of EQing, I rolled off a lot of the low end, added a couple of mid boosts. And then cut up a little bit between 3 and 4K because I feel like it was a particular texture of the sound which was making it sound a little bit off what I want it to be. So let's play the backing track so far without the main melody and this is what we get. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the last thing we're all sort of wondering is where is the synth hook? Now, there was this one synth which I always listen to in Logic and I think sounds very similar and it's the Massive Saws. And what I've done is I've just worked with this and I've tried to shape a little bit more to be closer to how the weekend's done. What I've done is I've done octaves of the melody because I feel like there is uh, that present when you listen to the melody. But what I have done is rolled off three to four K on that because that is where the lower octave uh, resonated and I wanted to sort of not mute but make the lower harmony a lot more subtle without turning it down because I still wanted a little bit of clarity from the rest of it and so this is what it sounds like. A very happy ZT synth vibe. And then bus 5, I have also put a space designer on, just 1.6 second, nothing too big. So if you actually listen to the song, there isn't actually a ridiculously long reverb on there. But that is how you create the synth. And then if you put it all together, we get this. So there you go guys, that was just a quick tutorial for beginners, how to make blinding lights by the weekend. And comment below if you actually want to see me try and replicate the whole song, it'd be really interesting to see if you want the whole song, because there's a lot of different ideas that go on that song. So that could be a good challenge to challenge myself, as well as encouraging you guys to challenge yourself as producers. But lastly, before I end the video guys, just want to say hit that subscribe button again if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful. And if you want to learn more about Logic, I'm going to leave the playlist below to all my Logic Pro X for beginners videos, so you can learn everything there is to know about logic in that little playlist series that i have put together but if you do have any more questions again comment below and i'll be happy to answer them anytime but thank you for watching guys and i will see you in the next video